All right. Hey, good morning, world. How's, uh, how's everybody doing today? It's Friday. Man, it's always like, just I love saying it's Friday, right? Uh, especially if you're a, a, a nine to five kind of guy or six to three or whatever your job is, Monday through Friday, and you got the weekend off. So, uh, yeah, buddy, I'm looking forward to hanging out with the Tamster tonight, finding some place to eat dinner and uh, see what kind of trouble we can find. And I'm uh, just going to enjoy that. I hope you have a great weekend planned. And uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to be a good day for us right down here anyway. So uh, I'm looking forward just to having time to do what I choose to do. And uh, anyway, looking forward to that. Get to sleep in a little bit so we, tomorrow, which means, you know, probably five for me. But still, sleeping in. So I hope you got great plans going. I hope you've had a good week. Uh, I want to dive into some truth today. Man, I'm so excited about this uh, that we're looking at right now. So uh, if, you're, if you're tracking with us, we're in the book of 1 John, and we're just looking at how do we know we're saved. Um, I think that's a burning question that is on the mind of a lot of believers. And then there's a lot of believers that that should be on their mind, and, or, or and I wouldn't even say believers. Some people who call themselves believers, it should be on their mind. Uh, there's nothing wrong with examining ourselves on occasion to see if we are of the household of faith. That's what Paul told the Corinthian church. Examine yourself to see if you are of the household of faith, if you pass the test. And so uh, that's what Paul said. And and the book of 1 John is written that we may know that we have eternal life. So so it, it's a... It's something that the, the leaders of the movement, uh, the, the apostles, understood would be a natural incl- inclination to wonder about. Now, there should come a place where you're confident that you're a Christ follower. But that confidence isn't because, and I don't get tired of saying it because too many people are, are experiencing this. Not everybody talking about heaven's going there. So it, we're not looking for an experience. We should, there should come a place where we know that we are Christ followers. Not because we prayed a prayer, not because we walked an aisle, not because we, you know, got baptized in, in somewhere. Uh, no, none of those things. It is because we see the fruit of our belief in our lives. So those things may have been a catalyst. I'm not diminishing that. Uh, most of us, that's how we came to Christ. We made some sort of an expression, uh, whether it was through a prayer or, or, or walking an aisle and and. and praying, but whatever that was. But that's not what saved us. Uh, that, that's not what demonstrates, and that's not our proof. Our proof is in the fruit. Jesus says you will know them by their fruit. So what John does is he gives us fruit by which we know that we come to know him. So this is what's, this is what's so powerful. And listen, if you as we walk through these, if you see these in your life, now we're not looking for tens, right? We're not, this, we're not grading this and going, oh, well, I've got an A in that. But we should see at least that we that it's a part of our life. And so these are where we've come so far. And, and I'm just going to remind us of them. Here, here's some of the tests that we've found in the book. Are you certain that Jesus lived? Are you? Could someone talk you out of the fact that Jesus actually even lived and walked among us and was crucified and risen from the dead? If you can be talked out of that, you need to rethink where you are in your Christian faith. You have to know with certainty. And, and so that's the first step. Second one is, are we walking in the light? Listen, you're either walking in light or darkness. And, and darkness is easy to see what it looks like. The, the, those who think they're in light are in darkness a lot. But we have to, we're, we've, we know the difference because we study the Scriptures. The Scriptures tell me how to walk it. Galatians 5 would be a great example of that. When you live life after the flesh, you see the evidence of that. That's called darkness. When you live life after the Spirit, in Galatians 5, you'll see what that is. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. When you, If that is kind of what you're walking in, well, then you know you're walking in the light. Uh, the third one, are we habitually confessing sin? Listen, if you've gotten to the place where you got, that's not a big deal. Sin's not a big deal. That's just a little sin. You, listen, hey, wake up, right? We should, our habit of ours is that every little sin that we see, that we do, that we experience, we go, God, God that was wrong. I am so sorry. I'm repenting of that. And, I'm, and and you keep moving forward. It's the habit of our life to confess. And the, the his habit is that he has already forgiven us for those things when we are demonstrating that we have habitually confessed our sins. Uh, the, the, the next one is, do you have a passion to obey? Listen, you can't obey what you don't know. So if you're not in the Word, you can't really know that you're obeying it, right? And so he says, listen, do you have a passion to obey the Word, to look at it and go, okay, what, am I, what do I need to do here? 
What is God calling me to do here? See, that's evidence. If that's that's kind of the, the aspect of your life that you see, come on, you know you're a believer. If you don't see it, jamming yourself. Um, then then the next one is, do we love purely and completely? I don't mean love those that we that are easy to love. I mean those that are hard to love. Do we love? Do we love people? That that mean uh, boss. That uh, that lazy coworker. Um, those enemies of yours that keep nagging at you. We love purely and we love completely. Uh, are we growing and we maturing? Are we? Do you see growth? Do you see where? Hey, I look back and I was kind of a baby Christian here, but I see where I'm kind of taking steps and I'm growing. These are all evidences that that there's that we are healthy spiritually, that we are alive. Have we stopped chasing the world? Have we decided that man, this is silly? I'm not chasing this stuff. Everything I've chased in the world didn't satisfy. And then do we have the anointing? That's where we are today. Do we have the anointing? Do we have the Holy Spirit? Do we, do we see evidence of the Holy Spirit in our life? Now, we're going to review because yesterday we broke this thing up because it's kind of a complex text, and so I'm trying to break it up. And so right now, I'm just going to kind of give you a review, remind you what I talked about. So I'm going to read it for us. And we're in 1 John chapter 2, um, verse 18, and he says this, Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it's the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going out showed that none of them really belonged to us. Now, that's where we looked last week. Let's kind of talk about that real quick. We are living in the last days. This is what he says. In fact, John says, hey, we're in the last hour of the last days. Uh, and he's not speaking uh, specifically in terms of that, but he's saying, hey, we're, we're, man, last days. Even John, this was almost 2,000 years ago. John's going, hey, we're, we're not only in the last days. We're in the last hour of the last days. Now, uh, the last days began at the crucifixion. That's when the time clock, I don't have time to explain all that, but that's when the time clock started. So it began at the cross. We are living in an evil age which began in the garden at the, at the fall and sin of man. So we're living in an evil age, this present evil age, because sin is running rampant and it's getting worse. But there's going to come a time when Christ will rectify all of that when He comes and He will establish a new kingdom. Uh, and that is the, the age to come. That is the kingdom. That's what we look forward to. Now, he says there are there is an Antichrist, and he's coming. John's the only one who uses the term Antichrist. Others use the term the lawless one, evil one. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of terms in the, in the Old Testament when to talk about the Antichrist that we all know of, 666 and all that stuff that we, that we have in our head. He's coming. An Antichrist simply means one who is against Christ and or seeking to replace Christ. So this is... This is what we're looking for, and he's coming. But John says, but right now, there are many of them in the world. In his day, there were many in the world who, uh, and now, it, for him, listen, everything started, John, right? He was a part of the original, the 12, the 120 in the upper room at Pentecost that experienced uh, the, the explosion of the Holy Spirit being poured out into the church so that the church had this unity aspect of the of fellowship with God the Father and the Holy Spirit living in them. And and so everybody began to there were three thousand they were added early in that in that deal. John was a part of that. So John starts out with 120 all of a sudden now there's three thousand uh, uh, people who have who have joined in. Well some of them had left. He goes, they're the ones who are the Antichrists. They are they they didn't just leave they they left and tried to say they have they have something better, and so this is why he writes like he does when he says they went out from us. That is, there were some who were a part of this original thing. They went out from us. They didn't really belong to us, or they would have stayed with us. Because why? Because they have the truth. John's the one who walked with Jesus. John's the one who saw Jesus. John the one is one who heard Jesus. So that's where the purity of the gospel started with John and the apostles, and the fact that they left. Only evidence is that they never really belonged to them to begin with. Now, what's the application for us, which we looked at yesterday? There are those who, uh, you know, have, have an emotional experience, run in, run down the aisle, think they're saved, everything's good, and then they fade away. Well, the only evidence that they never knew them to begin with. It wasn't that they lost their salvation. It's that they never really had it. You, you prof Profession of faith is not the same as possessing faith. 
And so they ever so, so you have a lot of friends, and you think, man, did they lose their salvation? I mean, they were really on fire. No, no, they they never had it. That that that's what happened. They are like the soul that Jesus speaks about: the hard soul, the rocky soul, the thorny soul, and the good soul. You you have the the the, the all three of the souls that the hardened that heard it and go, I don't care about it. The one that they were real emotional, but then when when you know, uh, sun beats down, they kind of fade away. The excitement, emotionalism fades away, and they go on to something else. And then you have those who the cares of the world just show life out of them. They only evidence that they never were of the true faith anyway. Only those who have the good soul. So this is what we're talking about. Now, uh, they, they didn't remain. Now, I, I want to take the time. I hope I've got a little time to do this. Um, I, I just want to kind of let us see what some of these look like that, that uh, are the Antichrist. Paul uh, told Titus in uh, the Isle of Crete in Greece, he says, For there are many rebellious people, full of meaningless talk and deception, especially those of the circumcision. These people thought, wow, you've got to have something else besides Jesus in order to be saved. They must be silenced, he said, because they're disrupting whole households, teaching things they ought not to teach, and that for the sake of dishonest gain. And he says they're, they're the kind who weave their way into homes and prey on, uh, on weak people. And then we looked at this... Uh, Yesterday, uh, Paul told Timothy, who was pastoring in Ephesus, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People would be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. They want to pretend to be something, but they're not. And then he goes on to say, preach the word, Timothy, in season and out of season, because there's going to come a time when people will not put up with the truth, with sound doctrine. Instead, they want to their own desires. They're going to gather a great number of people and teachers who will say what their itching ears want to hear. You see how that goes? So this is, this is what we're looking at here. Now, uh, that's, that, that gets us to yesterday. Today... Uh, in the time that, that I've got now, I want to talk to us about, he says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. Now, this is so good. You have an anointing. Chrisma. It's, it's the term uh, oil. Uh, it, it's meant to anoint. To, it's, it's a healing kind of a thing. Uh, <clears throat> and so what he's saying is, and, and where he's clear on this, uh, John, in fact, is the only one who uses the word chrisma, uh, other than Paul in 1 Corinthians uh, 121. Uh, where where he says, uh, Paul says this, Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. He set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. And so what we're here from this is the, the reality. Is the Holy Spirit actively present in your life? This is the question that we ask. What is the anointing? Oh, so good. Listen, when, when, when you came to Christ, the Holy Spirit was deposited into your life. God, very God, in the form of Spirit, was poured into your heart. You, it became a down payment. He, he became your personal uh, guide, the parakletos, one who comes alongside of me and one who walks with me through this life. That's why Jesus says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Lord, I will always be with you. How? Well, in the Spirit, because they're one. And so I have this homing device. That I don't mean that in any disrespectful sense. I have the Spirit of the living God who is in me, who is leading and guiding me to all truth. He's, he's the, he comes alongside of me. So like a child who runs off to, to play and gets in trouble, and you go, hey, no, 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 come back. Or one who's learning how to ride the bike and you kind of keep your hands on and make sure they don't fall. That's the Holy Spirit in my life. When I start running off, he's going, no, 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 come back. That's not good for you. No, 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 don't eat that. No, 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 don't go there. No, no, don't look at that. Right? This is the Holy Spirit. He's, it's his anointing. He's the deposit guaranteeing me my inheritance. And so so uh, he's the comforter. He's, the, he's my guide. He's, he's truth. Uh, he, he's all of he's God living in us, and that anointing lets me know truth from error. This is what he's saying. So he says, um, "But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know truth. Why? Because somebody tried to explain it to me. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a piece of that, but no, no, no. My spirit bears witness what somebody's saying. And I go, yeah, that's God, right? 
So I have that. Those who left, they didn't have it. But you and me, if we're Christ followers, we have the Spirit. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you hear the Spirit telling you what's true and what's false? See, this is why we can't love the world because it starts. it's like putting mufflers on our ears and we can't hear clearly God Himself. And so we have to, we have to ever be listening to the Holy Spirit. He says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all truth. I do not write. He says, look, I'm not writing to you because you don't know the truth. I'm writing to you because you do know it. And you know that no lie comes from the truth. Don't listen to the people who've kind of left this deal. They're denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son as the Father acknowledges the Father also. And that was in his day. Uh, they, they had these groups that were, that were saying, well, Jesus really wasn't God and, and all this stuff. And, but Anyway, it was, it was a mess. That's not necessarily something we I want to entertain right now. So then he comes to verse 20, uh, 24, and he says, As for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. What's he saying there? Listen, if, the, if you have the anointing, you have heard the truth, be careful to remain in that truth. Don't get caught up by every new shiny little doctrine thing that comes along, every new shiny little movement that comes along. Be careful about getting caught up in that stuff. Okay? He says, see to it that what you heard, what you know to be true, stay in. Right? Just stay with the old gospel. Stay with what the truth of the word says. Quit listening to everybody else who wants to re-explain it to you and tell you that it, it doesn't say what you already know it says. If it does remain in you, he says, right? This is where he's going. If it does remain in you, um, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what He promised us, eternal life. Listen, when I stay true to the Word, it's evidence that the Holy Spirit is in me. And the Holy Spirit and God the Father are on a crash course together. The Holy Spirit is leading me to God. And when, I get to, when I get to God, whether it's through death or, or the Lord comes for us, I have eternal life. This is what He's talking about. So my job is to listen to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Listen, I know you people say, well, they got an anointing. Hey, you do too. All right, can we stop that kind of conversation? Man, they're really anointed. I understand what we're saying. They're really filled with the Spirit. But all of us who are in Christ have this anointing. Now, he says in verse 26, this truth is in us. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from Him remains in you and you do not need anyone to teach you now what he's saying is you don't it's not that you don't need preachers you don't need people like me who he's kind of gifted to, to, to be a part of that's my gift to help explain things he's saying that once it's explained you don't need somebody else to go no no, no well, let me give you the deeper meaning of things right when you start hearing somebody say i'm gonna give you deeper meanings let those be little warning bells going off in you because the gospel's not that deep it's a simple truth love god with all your heart soul mind strength love your neighbors yourself how's that play out through Christ in us. Now, he says then, uh, but his anointing teaches you, who's that? The Holy Spirit teaches you about all things. And as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, there were some out there playing games. Oh, you know, and they were, and there's always going to be that. You're going to see people going crazy, acting like they got, you know, the Spirit. And you're going, mm -mm, it's not it. Not because they're crazy, it's because it's counterfeit. Because they're not, there's no fruit in that. He says, just as I have taught you, remain in him and so that's the truth that i had for you today and i wanted to wanted to share it with you listen in our world today uh you're gonna there's a there's what's called a progressive movement that's coming and they're gonna take the truth of the scriptures and they're gonna they're messing it up right now and it's and it's everywhere and it's permeating and as our world gets deeper these prophets of satan masquerading as angels of light are going to keep stepping forth and you're going to hear them say things like uh you know, hell's not real, and and all roads lead to Jesus, and uh, he's he's about love. The the God of the Old Testament uh, is not the same God of the New Testament, and that Jesus is all about love and tolerance, and and while he's all about love and he's all about grace, tolerance is not something that Jesus is about. He's about justice. You can't be intolerant. I mean, you can't be tolerant and just. You have to choose. And so, and that's just a word for you on the side. I'm not even going to charge you for that stuff. Just be aware, all right? Uh, man, I love you guys. Can't wait to uh, see you. I'm going to take the weekend off, and so are you, I guess, from, from this. And then I'm going to see you Monday. Hope you have a great weekend. Uh, love you, and I'll see you soon.